Hello, so in the next series of videos, this is going to be part of a series where I'm going to show how to make a basic rocket ship uh, for your game. So this is kind of a little rocket ship and I will show how to make all the different mechanics that go into making this rocket ship as well as uh, other general information such as this crash screen uh, as well as going into like the next level and stuff like that so scene management and things like that as well as like follow camera systems like the one that uh, you're currently seeing right now where we're kind of following the camera along uh, and so yeah I'm just gonna kind of go through uh, through all the videos and just kind of explain each system and how to implement it as well as you know just other general information uh, about this game so yeah, we'll start with uh, video one. So to start this off, we're gonna wanna grab ourselves some sort of like package or some sort of model that we can play with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type rocket and I'm just gonna look under some of the free assets and grab this Atom Rocket model. Uh, this is the same one I used in the little demonstration I had earlier. So I'm just gonna mark off the demo and I'm just gonna import this package. So now then, let's go ahead and start by creating a brand new empty game object. And we're going to say rocket. And without the strike. So we'll create the rocket. And then we'll look for under the prefab. And we'll just pop this under it. So now then, we are going to keep the pivot point. So this is kind of an important note here. We're going to keep the pivot point at the middle. Uh, well, relatively the middle. So that looks about right. Just make sure the actual pivot point is correct here. So yeah. So we're going to try to keep that at the pivot point. And then we're going to need to add a couple things to the actual controller. So we're going to need to do a uh, rigid body and a capsule collider as well as a box collider and I'll show you what, why in a little bit. So the capsule collider is going to try to capture our shape. This won't apply for every single thing. So you might not have to do this box collider that I'm going to show in just a little bit, mainly because um, my shape is kind of more or less complex. So there's a lot of like little geometry here. However, if you have a very basic square shape for your rocket, then that'll work just fine. So anyways though, let's just do one and we'll try two and can't really see it. So try going up to about seven and then we'll just increase the radius and then we'll go from there. So. I can see it a bit more now, so we'll just kind of go shrink it just a little bit. So it looks like 1.5 will be about it, and then we'll shrink it down a little bit. Now then, we're going to use the box collider as a base so that our rocket ship doesn't want to tilt or anything, and that it can kind of lay on the bottom there. So we'll just kind of move this down, and then we'll kind of uh, increase this thing in size a little bit. So. Let's do it along the X and along the Z. And it can actually be significantly smaller. It only has to be as big as this little box here. So 1.5, 1.5. So it only needs to be as big as the baseline here. So that should be fine. And I mean, if you need to do it more, you can just wrong direction, scaled up a little bit more. So the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add some constraints to a rigid body. So we want to freeze the position because since this is going to be a more or less a side scroller, side uh, stroller, scroller, uh, we're going to only get be moved along uh, this direction here. So we're going to freeze the position to prevent it from doing this. We're also going to freeze the rotation because it should not be able to pivot around any other direction except for the Z direction. So except for 
this direction, which is the Z direction. So the next thing we need to do is add a rocket controller. And we'll create an ad. And then we'll open this up. And so now then we only need uh, a couple couple variables and a couple references. So we need a thruster force and we'll say 10 and then we'll say a tilt tilting force and we'll just say that's also 10. And so these will obviously have to be scaled up. Uh, you'll just have to kind of get the feel for it. And then we need an access to our rigid body. So now then we need to get an awake method and get our rigid body component. So now we have access to our rigid body and then we need to have an update and a fixed update. So now the update method is going to handle our tilting because it's not more or less, it's not going to be a real physics based with the tilting. However, the actual thrusting will be physics based. It will be entirely physics based. So we're going to just start with if actually we're going to say float tilt is equal to input dot get axes and then we're going to say horizontal so what kind of horizontal tilt are we getting and then we're going to say uh, that the We're going to say a new var variable thrust is equal to input dot get key and we can say key code and then I'm just going to copy this really fast. Key code dot space key code dot up arrow and then key code dot w. So kind of just any of these will work for this. So if not mathf dot approximately uh, tilt to zero f. So if 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 it is zero f, then we are not the player is not pressing any key that tilts the thing, tilts the rocket. So if it is not approximately zero, then that means we are pressing something. So we want to rv dot freeze rotation is equal to true so we want to lock whatever our rotation is we need to stop it entirely and then we want to do transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot euler and then what we're going to want to do here and for anyone that doesn't know quaternion is just how unity handles rotations uh, because it cannot handle uh, just straight up Euler angles due to gimbal locking as well as like other issues. So what we're going to do is do transform dot uh, rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler, and then we're going to grab the Euler angles that we're currently at, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say new vector three. So we're going to add whatever our current rotation plus. We don't have to worry about the other two axes because we'll never rotate along this and we'll never rotate along this. We're only ever going to rotate along this. Uh, and by this, I mean we're never going to rotate along X. We're never going to rotate along Y. We're only ever going to rotate along Z. So we're going to take that and we're going to say uh, thruster or tilting force times time dot delta time so this time dot delta time make sure that we are frame rate independent so that looks fine and then rb dot freeze rotation is equal to false now the reason i did this here is because if you are not pressing the keyboard and you're at an angle on the ground you'll notice this very weird effect happening where it's almost like someone is pushing it very very slowly 
and that it is just locked into place. So it's a very weird effect. So instead, this just allows us to fall flat uh, without any sort of hindrance, while this will make sure that we freeze in our position, we have full control over the rotation, and then we give back control to the Unity engine. Uh, and so, looks like there is some sort of, am I missing one of these? Okay, so make sure you have your parentheses. So this handles our uh, tilting. Now the actual thrusting is even easier. So if thrust, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do rb.add relative force. So if you read the description here, it says adds the force to the rigid body relative to its coordinate system. Now what this basically means is that whatever vector you put into it, it's going to be in terms of whatever rotation it's in. So if it's like this and we say, and I'll, I'll kind of show you. So we're going to say add relative force and we're going to say vector, vector three dot up times thruster force times time dot tilt the time and that's all we need to do so if we save this now the reason I say vector 3 to up is because normally vector 3 to up always means go straight up but since it's saying add relative force it means that it's going to use the up vector in terms of the actual object so like that so that should be everything and so we can try to test this out and if we just kind of hit up nothing's really gonna happen it's kind of hard to see anything happening so the reason why is because you may have to increase your thruster force to something like let's say a thousand so if we play this again we should see now it is now thrusting up uh, one other thing I've immediately noticed is that we also need to increase our tilting force to maybe a hundred. Uh, that's probably too much. Yeah, that's too much. Also, I've noticed that it seems as though I am not multiplying my tilt. So make sure you multiply your tilt or else you're not going to be tilting in the correct direction. So let me go ahead and quickly set this to 10 and 180. And so now that is more, more or less what I'm looking to get. So now the next thing I'm going to add before this video ends is a camera controller. And so we're going to add a camera controller that can handle our player object, that can follow our player object. So one thing to note is that you actually want to do this in fixed update. Uh, the reason why is because if you do this in any other update, even late update, it's going to cause jittering effects due to the fact that our physics, uh, our, our player is running on physics. So let's go ahead and quickly tag him as player. And so since we're running on physics, it's on the physics loop, which sometimes doesn't match up with the update loop, which means that we're going to have to actually run it in fixed update. This affects nothing other than that. So quickly make a vector three offset. And so we're gonna to wanna to use this offset to make sure we're kind of farther back away from our player. And then we're going to want to say player, tra uh, we're gonna say transform, player transform. And then we're gonna start and we're gonna say player transform is equal to uh, game object that find object find game object with tag and I just want to say object not objects and then we're just gonna say player and then we're also gonna say transform and then we're gonna say in the fixed update we're gonna say uh, vector 3 target pose is equal so the target position is equal to player transform dot position plus the offset and then we're going to say transform dot position is equal to vector three dot lerp 
So the LERP, if you guys uh, do not know, is linear interpolation, which basically means, so if I pull up some MS Paint really fast, so which basically means if I have a point here and here, and this is my target point here and here, that it is going to basically say that this is value zero and this is value one, and whatever value is in between there is what it's going to set it to. So we're going to use time dot delta time to actually you uh, to 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 linear interpolate this because all of time dot delta time is usually below one second, so it will never reach one, and then this will actually just kind of split this in half. So if I actually pull that back up, uh, it will actually kind of just go like this where this value gets split in half first and then it'll get split in half again split in half again split in half again and then eventually it'll just it'll reach this point because it can't because due to floating point numbers it won't it can't just continue on forever so eventually it'll get there and it'll actually get there really really quickly because these updates are happening so quickly so we're going to say from our current transform dot position to the target position and then we're going to say time dot delta time times some sort of smoothing speed so just to make it a little bit quicker and then we can go ahead and say that that's around 10 and then one last thing is transform dot look at and then we're going to say player transform so now that we have all that ready we can kind of run this and see how it works. So we're going to be right inside of the, the object for right now because we don't have any sort of uh, look away. And so now there. So it's around 11 and 20, 28. So let's say 11, 28. And so everything seems to be working. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to most likely show particle systems uh, as well as game winning and game losing and loading from one scene to another. So until next time, uh, if you guys like this video, like and subscribe and thank you very much.